Good morning people. So today I'm going to go through how to draw phylogenetic branched tree from a consensus sequence from identified nucleic acids in various strains. Okay, so this is going to be quite quick review with some descriptions. Our professor had given us a series of various different strains and a series of 12 of their nucleic acids that translate into amino acids so obviously we are going to have to develop our own consensus sequence so the first step in doing this is to organize your information so that it is markable okay even if you're not going to get marked on it is it important so that you can see your steps go back confirm your information okay so I always put it into a table where it sorts it out nicely where I've got all the amino acids in nice little columns okay this helps me when I am going to look for my consensus sequence and then at the end of all of that I added a column for naming it this is important to, so that you can track it and also so that later on when you draw your phylogenetic tree if it is not identified strains you can at least label where it where each strain is on the phylogenetic tree and then also another column I added for the counting of the nucleic acids that are similar okay so the first important part is to do your consensus sequence now this requires a lot of deductive reasoning okay but the first step is to have a look at what is all similar so we go along the column and we say okay well C if there's only C's there T is the most popular one so I highlighted those as I went along I saw there were some columns where the there were two of say A and A and G and G okay and then one T so now what takes preference now as we know in science okay is that from from genetics is that G and C always take preference okay they're heavier they're more easy to bind so and they're going to bind first when you are evaluating so it's going to be better to pick the G's or C's so in this case I picked G okay uh, the other column that was a bit of a confusion I picked G again and then there was one here where there was A's and T's and one G so now I picked T because I looked along all the different sequences and the ones with the most hits aka the ones that had more similar nucleic acids T came up in so I picked T because that's going to be the one that's going to bind most to the consensus sequence. So I picked T. Okay, then I've got my consensus sequence. As you can see, I've highlighted it and named it, well, bolded it. So that's the first part of the question that has been solved. The next step is to find the percentage relatedness to the consensus sequence. So what I did was I went and accounted all of the nucleic acids that were similar and I put it in that column there. So it was 87979. Okay. And I went and I calculated the percentage. So as you can see there, 66, all of that. The total in A. So that is there are 12 in the sequence. Okay. Then I divided it and times it by 100 to get its percentage and then the most important now when you are drawing your phylogenetic tree it's not how closely related they are you're trying to show the distance they are from the original sequence so that's not how similar they are that's how far away that's how they differ so you have to actually calculate this part this is important otherwise your tree looks completely wrong okay so we put that in there I calculated it 
and then the next step of step three is to actually pair them according to how similar they are to each other not the same uh, consensus sequence so i went and i had a look and i decided that a and d were very similar you can see there's a collection of g's in there that make them very very similar um b was completely by itself because it wasn't there weren't parts of the the sequence that was similar to the others even though the percentage of similarity is the same to that of d it isn't at all similar okay and then c and e you can see there are a lot of similarities there okay so that's where the highlighted part becomes important because then it's easier to see which ones are similar okay now what i went and did was i decided to just to list that there it's easy to keep track and also when they were marking you get marks for that okay so when drawing your phylogenetic tree okay i need to put in here just the phylogenetic tree and their distance not related um, not their relatedness distance to the consensus sequence okay i apologize my spelling isn't the best so if you guys go along this video and you see some spelling mistakes i apologize okay so what you've got to first do is draw a grid it's like a glorified graph so you have to put in the percentages what i tend to do is go and draw a line that's 10 centimeters long and then i go from there so in this case i just drew a random line just for the sake of it because it's hard to do on word so the scale of variation that i have labeled there okay and then the consensus is going to sequence is going to be this here you can label a con or whatever you've decided to label your consensus sequence above you can label over there now what you have to do is draw your branches okay this is literally sitting and learning how to draw it's very easy all of your ones that are a similar percentage like you see the c and e they are the same percentage they line up exactly you have to normally draw this to scale um if you're doing it in the exam just remember keep it at 10 it's easier to follow then you can actually draw the line exactly to how it's supposed to be um so as you can see there i've got my branch for a and d which are selected as being paired b by itself and c and e so that's pretty much all you have to do you've just got to make sure that you label them at the end and um, if you really want to be advanced you can put brackets with the percentage next to them on either side just so that your professor knows that that's the percentage that you were working on Okay, so that's everything in a nutshell. Hope you guys have a great day.